Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Today is January the 7th, 2021. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, imagine my surprise. I was on Twitter this morning and I see where Sun Boxing is reporting that Billy Joe Saunders WBO super middleweight champion, that's 168 pounds, wants to fight reigning 160 pound WBO middleweight champion Demetrius Andre. Now, these guys don't get as much attention as their talent deserves. Understand, Saunders is unbeaten. Understand, Andre is unbeaten. Understand, Saunders is a mover. While he has an inside game, he prefers to hit you with the jab, stay outside, move around the ring, and box you. That is exactly the fight style for Demetrius Andre. If this fight happens, in my opinion, this is one of the best fights that could happen in the sport of boxing in 2021. Both of these guys are on my short list of people most likely to be. Saul Alvarez, who many of you consider to be the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? I suspect that Canelo doesn't move as well as either Billy Joe Saunders or Demetrius Andre, right? If a fight were announced between Canelo and Saunders, I would take Saunders, right? Saunders actually has experience. Hell, he has a title at 168. He has the weight. If a fight were announced between Andre and Canelo, right? That's a little bit more difficult simply because although Andre has the size, in fact, he's taller than Billy Joe Saunders, he doesn't have the experience above fighting at 160 that Canelo has. But make no mistake, style-wise, if you take out the punching power, and both of these guys can punch, folks, but if you take out the punching power, I believe style-wise, Andre would have the advantage. Right? Canelo seems to be keen of late on guys 30 and older. He doesn't fight movers that much. Right? His last fight was against Callum Smith, a guy who prefers to be on his front foot not his back foot moving around the ring. Add in the fact that Saunders and Andre fight out of a southpaw stance, right? While I suspect Caleb Plant is a southpaw, he fights out of an orthodox stance. Both of these guys are movers and they fight out of a southpaw stance. I think that would give Canelo even more trouble. Let's just say, too, I'll always question Billy Joe Saunders' level of fitness, right? He has some baby fat on him. Uh, by reputation, he's not a guy who keeps himself in tip-top shape between fights. But let's just say I also question Canelo's ability to deal with a lot of movement, right? To not be the guy who's as mobile as his opponent, which was the case in the Callum Smith fight, but to be the guy who can't move as well as his opponent, who's accustomed to staying outside and winning rounds, right? I think that kind of fight would deplete Canelo physically. Let's go back to the Kovalev fight at 175. 
Canelo's clearly pacing himself. He takes off one of the later rounds. Right now, Kovalev is a guy who prefers to be on his front foot. KO artist, heavy-handed guy, has a big jab, but just uses it to open you up before he comes in throwing bombs. What if Canelo fights a guy with a great jab? Who doesn't have to come inside to win the round? Who, when Canelo slows down a bit, can win the slow rounds? Now I have to tell you, this is one of those fights where I don't know who's going to win it. Saunders or Andre? I think very highly of both. I think the boxing public has been keying on some other fighters. Fighters who deserve praise. Right? An Errol Spence. A Terence Crawford. Right? Both unbeaten. A Canelo. I think the boxing public has overlooked these guys. Understand, Billy Joe Saunders has beaten people like Andy Lee, uh, Chris Eubank, David Lemieux. Right? Understand, Andre has been around a long time, folks. He was a title holder at 154 before he was a title holder at 160. Right? He's now making big money on the zone. He's one of the fighters the zone thought had the talent to attract a crowd. If I had a gun to my head, since I can't pick a winner, if I had to make a play on Andre versus Saunders, right? And those aren't the fights you bet on, where you're thinking, you know, I don't want to make a play, but if I had to make a play, my advice is to keep your money in your pocket. But if I had to make a play, I would take the over. In other words, I personally believe that Southpaws actually prefer fighting right-handed fighters. They don't want to face another Southpaw. Right? The awkwardness of that Southpaw versus right-handed fighter dynamic gives the Southpaw, who's accustomed to facing right-handers, an advantage. The righty isn't familiar with a southpaw. The southpaw is familiar with righties. That's what southpaws want. They don't want to face another southpaw. Let me say this too. I'm a skeptic on whether this fight takes place. Because while the fighters might want to fight each other, I'm sure management behind the fighters thinking, hey, player, don't give away your foot speed advantage. Right? A guy who can move, a guy who has a mobile jab, both of these guys do. A guy who can lift his feet wants that to be an advantage. He doesn't want to fight an Ali type guy who's going to match him. He doesn't want to give away what made him the unbeaten fighter he is. So pay close attention to this fight. I suspect that Andre, who is at least six feet tall, has outgrown middleweight. I think he has designs on fighting at 168. Understand, both of these guys are in their 30s. Right? So they don't want to waste time in warm-up fights. They want to fight for the big money. They want to fight for titles. Right? I suspect that if the fight takes place because both of these guys are highly technical, unless they've sparred privately in the past, the first few rounds are going to be feeling out rounds. Right? You got two guys who like to play the angles. You're going to have a positioning chess match in the early rounds over who stands where and can do what. Right? Two guys with back foot games who can both crash the pocket, they're going to be figuring out, and it'll take three or four rounds, which strategy is the best strategy. Understand, too, when you have a guy who can beat you, who can win rounds without hurting you, without knocking you down, 
then if that guy jumps out to a lead, right? Let's say Billy Joe Saunders opens up a five rounds to one lead on Andre, right? Billy Joe, after all, opened up a big lead on Chris Eubank when they fought. Well, with boxers, they're thinking, okay, great. If this formula works, why change it? Right? Billy Joe Saunders has a KO percentage of less than 50%. So understand, if he jumps out to a lead, like he did against Chris Eubank, he's going to coast, like he did against Chris Eubank. He's not going to go for the KO. Now, that's different than punchers. Right, Mike Tyson jumps out to a lead on you. He's going to think, okay, well, what's stopping me? <laughs> what's stopping me from knocking you out? Right, you know, Tyson Fury, when he fought Deontay Wilder, hurt Wilder, never entered his mind, I'm sure, to coast. Right, he wanted the KO. Well, here, these guys are accustomed to not getting the KO. They're accustomed to jumping out to a lead, owning the scorecards, landing the play, winning by decision. Right? So for those reasons, I can't tell you a winner of Saunders-Andre. It's that good a fight. But I am leaning to the over if I had to place a bet. Right? Don't get me wrong. Price is everything. If the casino comes up with a plus 200 for the over, okay, no need to twist my arm, I'll take the play. I suspect the casino is going to be savvy, as it always is. It's probably going to give you less than even money odds on the over. So chances are, I won't bet this fight. But you need to know, in this universe, where Canelo, for a period of time, was fighting with the knee brace, I noticed the knee brace is off, and where Canelo has been fighting guys who aren't known as movers, Callum Smith, Kovalev, Rocky Fielding, those are his recent fights, folks. Right? Danny Jacobs can move. How old is Danny? Let's just say Danny doesn't move as well as these two guys. Right? Canelo hasn't faced a mover on the level of these two for quite some time. Right? You need to pay attention to this fight. You also need to pay attention to the possibility that Canelo decides to fight one of these two guys. Right? I believe Saunders is more dangerous because more experience at 168. But Andre would be very dangerous for Canelo as well. Right? But there's more risk taking Andre because of the lack of experience above 160 than there is taking Billy Joe Saunders. Let's watch this story closely. Let me also say this too. David Benavides was recently online. Understand, Benavides is still unbeaten. Abel Sanchez, Golovkin's former trainer, a guy who knows a thing or two about fighters fighting at 160 and 168. Terrible Terry Norris's former trainer, right? Sanchez has been a world-class trainer for a long time. He claims of all the guys that he brought in, David Benavides is one of the people who impressed him the most. Right? Listen to Boxing Insiders. Abel Sanchez believes, and Sanchez flatly says, Canelo, not Golovkin, his former fighter, but Canelo is the best in the sport pound for pound. Sanchez is on record as saying Benavides has a chance to beat Canelo. Right? I can tell you Benavides is the opposite of these two. Benavides is a big guy with a big punch who's extremely accurate, who wants a pocket. Right? Benavides is not going to be up on his toes, dancing, backing away from you. That's not his game. Benavides believes he can blow Canelo out of the pocket. Right? Understand. Abel Sanchez, who's seen Benavides up close, had him in his gym. Believes Benavides has a shot. 
So pay close attention to the 168 pound weight class. There's a lot going on there, right? A lot. If Saunders fights Andre, the reigning champ at 160, I believe both men are going to get tested, right? You're also going to see movement that is quite frankly missing in several divisions in boxing. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders, Demetrius Andre, all of these guys use every part of the ring. In other words, there are some fighters where you see the guy's back touch the ropes and you say, uh-oh, this brother's in trouble. Right? Not these guys. These guys will go over to the ropes and will lean on the ropes. Right? Just like Ali did against Foreman. They'll lean on the ropes and they'll set up shop. Mayweather against Marcus Maidana. Right? You say, oh, he's up on the ropes. Then you notice he's landing shots. You notice while he's resting up on the ropes, he's actually winning the round against an opponent. So Saunders against Andre would be interesting. Two movers using the entire ring, both guys with jabs, both guys accustomed to facing righties now in against the southpaw, both guys unbeaten in their 30s, which makes the outcome of the fight a career-threatening outcome, right? You're in your 30s, you lose. Other fighters want to make a name for themselves. They're going to try to fight the winner of your fight. You're running low on time, right? Saunders would be risking his title at 168. There's so many champs right now at 168. Losing your belt is perilous. So pay attention to this fight. These are two of the more underrated, unbeaten, and proven champions in the sport. Slick Southpaws, both movers, both with multifaceted games. In other words, moving's just part of it. Both guys can sit down on punches in the pocket if they want. Right? Both guys roughly the same size. Andre's a little bit bigger, roughly the same age. Let's hope this fight gets made. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.